Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as Waffle well Pearls. This is a bonus episode this week. Um, normally the show would come out tonight as sort of one episode and would be um, an inclusive episode of everything that I have been doing over here um, at Casa de Well well for pearls I guess instead I'm actually gonna release this segment separately from this week's show and the reason for that is because those who participated in the live stream back on Tuesday this is June of 2017 2018 oh my goodness what am I thinking June of 2018 um, have already seen the majority of the show uh, this was the only section that they hadn't seen and I hadn't pre-recorded this um, when I put the live stream together. So I decided to um, do it separately so that people weren't watching a whole bunch of repeat video um, over the course of this weekend. Although if you're sitting in knitting or sitting in spinning, I'm sure you wouldn't have actually minded, but still. Anyways, thank you to those who are returning viewers and anybody who's new to the show, this is not a typical episode. Like I said, this is a supplement episode to episode 97. So this is called 97B, if you will. And to those who are patrons of the show and who are patron supporters of the show, I really appreciate it. This is the reason why the show stays on the air month after month. And it's, um, it gives me the ability to create new content like this new segment to the show going forward. So this new segment is going to be called Spinning Growth. Um, it's going to be driven by you guys out there in the community. This is open to anyone. Um, you don't have to be a Patreon, a patron member of the show um, to contribute to this section of the show. Um, I'm hoping that this will be a really inclusive section of the show and I'm hoping that it will give us as a spinning community an opportunity to reflect on our spins and reflect on those things that happen when we're spinning that we just either didn't plan, didn't foresee, or we finish up and we're sort of looking at the spin, whether it's the actual yarn or maybe it's a finished object or a finished project, um, woven, crocheted, knitted, whatever. And we're sort of looking at it and we think, eh, it's not that it was a bad result. Um, it's just that it was maybe something that you didn't plan on it came out a bit differently than you thought that it would there was an obvious mistake in there um, maybe it's just something that uh, you had thought it would look one way and it ended up looking a different way so this is an opportunity for us as a community to reflect on that and to think about some of those things that happen because not every project that we make can be a knock it out of the park kind of a project it can't be perfect every time let's face it every project has a, an error in it if it's handmade um, you know, it, it, not every project can be a showstopper. Not every project can be, oh my goodness, this was absolutely perfect and I couldn't have planned this better. That's just not the case, particularly when we're doing a lot of sampling. Those who have followed along with me for a long time, either here on the podcast or on the blog or in the Ravelry group, know that um, I sample a lot and I like to look at different um, uh, aspects of a project before I commit to a larger spin and sometimes things just don't go well so feel free to uh, share your samples feel free to share your knitted samples woven samples crocheted samples your yarn samples this is all about anything to do with hand spun that just kind of ended up being a bit of a blooper when it was finished this is not meant to be something negative I I'm not going to sit here and say your yarn sucks your knitted project sucks that's not the purpose we all have those projects that didn't go quite to plan and we all have those projects where we would like to be able to sit back and say hey this didn't go that well I'm not really sure why it didn't go that well and maybe I could get some feedback from the community so this isn't a um, opportunity to really um, gang up on one another and diss on one another uh, one another's work it's an opportunity to reflect and grow and learn together and one person's blooper might be another person's um, knock it out of the park you know somebody might look at the skinny yarn and go oh my goodness I would love to spin that and in having these conversations and in talking about this you'll learn how to create whatever it was that was created and then we'll talk about some some things that maybe could have gone into the thought process before we started creating or some things that we could have thought about during the process to maybe um, eventually end up with a different result so that we can apply those learnings to our next project so this is all about growth it's all about learning it's all about looking at things from different angles the nice thing is when I'm doing the live stream, which I'm not streaming right now, so I'm not, I'm not, um, I don't have a, a channel of people that are that are seeing um, chattering away. This is just being recorded, just me and the camera at home. Um, 
the nice thing with the live stream is when we're doing one of these segments and we're talking about it, there is just an incredible amount of knowledge that comes out of that channel and people will have lots of different ideas and they'll have some um, positive things to contribute in terms of uh, things that they um, have thought about um, in the past around something because there's only so many techniques. There's only so many ways of spinning a fiber. There are a ton of them, but there's only so many ways. And so uh, something that I haven't thought of might have might be um, thrown out by the community and that'll help us to grow and learn as well because you guys have an incredible amount of knowledge. Even those of you who are relative beginners and self-identify as a beginner, you come with a wealth of knowledge from whatever worldview and world paradi paradigm and, and world experience that you come from that you're actually, you'd probably be amazed at how much of that knowledge, previous knowledge, whether you're a maker or coming from, you know, maybe a, a sector of work or the creativity of just living day-to-day -day life. It's amazing how much of that you actually um, put into your making and into your crafting and particularly into your spinning. So I hope that we can view this as, as um, an opportunity to learn and grow. I really like looking at the projects that didn't go quite to plan um, so that I can learn. And sometimes people have um, given me feedback on like the YouTube comment section or in the Ravelry group and said, you're too hard on yourself, um, you're being too critical, blah, blah, blah. And I actually don't see it that way at all. I'm, I've am i always been one of those people that's really happy to reflect um, on um, things that I've made or things that I've done so that I can learn get better. I don't see it as being um, really hyper self-critical. Some people don't want to always um, do that type of reflective work and that's totally fine. Um, we're all different and that's what make the, makes the world go round, right? Uh, I do think, and I will say as a bit of a caveat, that part of the reason why um, I do so much of that type of work is um, my nursing training. It's very much a focus in um, the undergraduate part of um, a nursing degree and a, a nursing training. There's a ton of courses like, you know, that are actually called Empowerment, Self and Others. Um, and then that work that was that foundation that was sort of built um, in my degree was um, brought forward even more so when I did my master's degree and when I did my graduate work. It was it was on a much broader scale and on a much bigger scale. And I think that type of work has just sort of become very natural for me um, to sort of go into that place very easily. So if it's not sort of a really super comfortable place for you, consider this an opportunity to sort of develop that side of you and, and take it as an opportunity to learn. That is why we are here. So um, let's jump into the um, yarn that I thought that I would use as the example because um, it's an opportunity to sort of show you one of my spins that I wasn't really super happy with. I did talk about it a little bit on the show, but it was back in the fall, um, November of 2017. I will try to link to the show that I talked about this yarn in, but if I don't, um, it's just because I couldn't find it. So bear with me. Um, when you're submitting your yarns or projects, or whatever you want to share in the Ravelry group, wool and spinning, um, the thread is called spinning growth. It is stickied at the top of the threads um, page. And just give me a, a quick blurby on what it was that you um, thought sort of went wrong or maybe something that resulted in the project or the yarn being an eh in your, in your books. So I'll read what I wrote for mine and um, this will kind of get us started. Don't ever feel like you have to say the name of the dyer if it was yarn that came from an indie dyer in particular. Don't ever say that, you, don't ever feel like you need to call out names or anything around like, you know, this was dyed by so-and-so of this company, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is not an opportunity to um, comment on anybody else's work. This is just an opportunity to comment on your work specifically and personally to you. So if you prefer not to say, um, like for example, this is Kinfolk, um, yarn and fibers, um, superwash Targi, and this is her colorway agate. If you don't want to say any of that, just say this fiber and yarn was, and then go into whatever your blurby is that you want to say. So please don't feel like you ever have to name any other like third party names. I won't say anything on the show if you don't say it in your blurby. Even if I know that like, say it's a sweet Georgia colorway or something, I won't say it. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there because I know some people would feel really badly saying, you know, oh, this is Kimfolk yarn and fiber and it turned out horribly. That's not the purpose of this at all. This, this is actually my absolute most favorite colorway ever out there, like ever. So that's actually why I was so comfortable talking about this spin because, um, 
when it came out kind of eh, I was like, ah, because this fiber and the way that Kylan dyed it is my absolute most favorite colorway ever. So, um, yeah, I hope that's clear as mud. And if not, just leave a comment below and, and I'll address it. So what I wrote was, this was yarn that I created last fall after feeling particularly burned out from a large spin. I had intended to spin it uh, quite a bit thinner and I was quite disappointed when I wound it off and skeined it. To make matters worse, and I put that in quotes, not really, but it felt that way at the time, it is superwash targy, so after washing and finishing, it puffed up even more. This made the yarn even more bulky and highlights the barber pulling in the skein. So you can see that pretty much this entire skein is barber pulled. So let's chat about that for a minute and talk about what it is that I feel kind of went wrong and what how I could have maybe changed the way that I spun this. So because it's my yarn, I know the background to this and I know the background to this project. And when I said that I um, had spun it last fall after being really burned out from a large spin, I wanted a spin that was like a quick and dirty. I wanted quick results and I wanted like yarn immediately. The problem with that is approaching a spin like that when, when it's sort of a treasured um, aspect of fiber from my from stash, you rush the process and you rush the spin. And so really in reflection, nothing I could have done with this fiber would have like turned out because I was rushing. I wanted a quick fix and I was really burned out after that really long spin that I had done and that was my mohair Romney spin that is like 1500 yards and it took forever. So in reflection, I wouldn't have chosen this to be my next spin knowing that I wanted a quick fix. I would have chosen a smaller amount of fiber, something that had been in my stash that was maybe, you know, 25 or 50 grams, some bats or a bat or some nests, um, little bat, batlings or little nests of fiber. Um, for a quick uh, pick me up fix sort of quick fix kind of project. So in, in in reflection, this wasn't a good project to choose as my next project. The second thing that I'll say about this spin is because it is superwash targi and because targi in general, and this is part of our breed and color studies right now, targi just goes spring. So as soon as it hits the water, when you um, go to wash your yarn and set your yarn, all that crimp becomes reactivated. And so no matter how you spin Targi, unless you spin it a little bit, your singles or your um, your singles, and then of course when you ply, unless you spin it um, sort of thinner, quite a bit thinner than what you originally wanted, it is going to puff up quite a bit and it is going to end up being a larger um, wraps per inch than you probably had originally planned. Um, and that was something that I, I, I knew. I just didn't take it into account and I didn't take it into um consideration when I was planning this project. So the original fiber actually looks like this. This is the original colorway. And I absolutely love it. But when we're and when we're examining the um the braid of fiber and I'm going to flip my camera so you guys can see it even better. Um one of the things that you really need to think about um with um with, with fiber like this is there's a lot of colors in here. Um, there's yellow, there's um, this rusty orange, there's this gorgeous forest green, um, there's more green over here, there's some sort of plummy black purple, lighter plummy, plummy red purple. Um, there's just a ton of colors in here and I think it's what draws me to it. It's all of my favorite colors. It's a very fall, uh, fall colorway in a lot of ways. Lots of warm, warm tones, but there's a lot of them. And they're dyed over a relatively short distance. So while a lot of the color is over an entire staple length and does overlap, there is a lot of overlapping in the colors as you spin. So as you draft, the colors do tend to blend quite a bit. So that results in a yarn that ends up being quite barber pulled because there are so many colors. And the chances of those colors matching up in the um, plying process is is quite low because there's no rhyme or reason to the way that it was dyed and skeins like this I just love because they're they, they're just full of infinite possibilities so I'm just going to lay out some of the um, 
colorway here to kind of give you an idea of how random this is this is dyed although there is a little bit of a pattern it kind of goes this blacky plummy color up here to the little bit of green and then the yellow the rust the rusty orange and then back again and it it does keep repeating but they're relatively short distances and they go all the way through to the end of the skein and of course you've got this really dark purpley black here that I really love but it is you know it's it's dark and then you've got the lighter colors in here with sort of the whites and the grays and when you're submitting yours if you can only show the yarn and you don't have photos of the original fiber that's totally fine um, don't feel like that should affect whether or not you can part whether you should post your stuff in in the um, in the Ravelry thread or not. This is just an example and I thought well since I do have another um, batch of this fiber it was a great opportunity to be able to share this with you. So let me refocus the camera and uh, that kind of just gives you an idea of what the fiber looks like. So now let's look at the yarn. So a yarn like this you could do a couple of things with. Um, the reality is I could have um, I could have chain plied it and that would have kept the colors together and it would have kept them in that re repetition that um, that that the yarn would that the fiber was originally dyed in um, I could have stripped it in half so taken it and stripped it this way all the way down spun one ply to one bobbin and one ply to another bobbin and then um, uh, plied it together um, I'm just going to change up my monitors here because I'm just finding it a little bit um, challenging to get all this in focus because I can't actually see the, the whole, uh, the whole, it's just, sorry, it's kind of blown out almost the colors on, on my monitor and on my screen. And I'm hoping that you can see that really well, but the colors are a bit blown out. Um, so I could have done that. Um, I could have, like I said, I could have chain plied. Um, I would be concerned with a fiber like this, um, unless I'm doing a really, really, really fine singles and doing a three ply for socks. Um, I, a three ply I find with some of these fibers like, like Targi, Cormo, Rambo, they really puff up a lot. And so a three ply becomes very round and, and quite, quite, um, hefty, I guess, for lack of a better word. So I probably wouldn't have gone with a three ply. Um, but, but I definitely am thinking very seriously about taking this second four ounces and, and, um, doing this technique with it. Um, the other thing I could have done is a, is a bit of more of like a fractal. So, so stripped it like this, but then taken this one and stripped it, you know, maybe four or six times, maybe eight times to create a fractal. So this would, this, um, this one would have, run all the way through consistently and then this one would have rotated through again it would have created quite a bit of barber pulling but more a little bit more contained and I would have still had those sections of yarn that were a bit more solid um, the other thing I could have thought about was instead of committing to spinning this entire thing end to end um, I did strip it down into nests um, before spinning, but then I just kind of spun. I didn't do a sample, even though I had eight ounces in total, um, and I just kind of spun and sort of had the attitude of, well, come what may, which is exactly what happened with the yarn. Um, I think probably what I would do in the future is um, I would have done a plyback test several times to get an idea of what a couple of different weights, spinning weights, would have resulted in. If I had spun this thinner, um, it wouldn't have minimized the amount of barber pulling, but if it was the exact same yarn but spun thinner, so I would have more yardage, um, I think it would have appeared a little bit a little bit more uniform because the colors would have been stretched out over a slightly longer um, distance. And I really like the look of skeins like this that are really barber pulled when they're quite a bit thinner because I was going for a fingering weight and this ended up being more of like an Aran weight. Um, and it's because, like I said at the beginning, I wasn't paying attention. I didn't sample. I just spun to spin. So while I'm actually happy with the yarn upon reflections, like almost seven months later, 
Um, I was really disappointed with it when it first came out. So those are some things that I would have thought of, um, that I'm thinking about for when I spin the next four ounces. Um, stripping it differently, um, spinning it much, much more finely, and probably staying away from a three ply unless I decide to do socks with it, but I don't think that I will. Um, and probably uh, doing a couple of samples. So taking um, some of these little nests of fiber and actually taking one like this and spinning um, a strip of it end to end and plying it and seeing what the result what the results are and what I like because I think it having a finer yarn and then working with that would have been a little would have given me a result that I that I would have preferred a little bit more that said I'm actually thinking very seriously about taking this yarn and uh, working up one of the bulkier, chunkier cowls that have come up on Ravelry over the past year or so. Um, I was thinking about the escarpment cowl just because I could knit it on like six and a half or seven millimeter needles, maybe even eight millimeter needles. I don't know what size that is in US sizing, I'm really sorry. Um, but quite big needles, which would give a nice open fabric and quite a, quite a lovely drape. Um, and it would be quite warm and it would look really nice because from a distance the yarn has this overall feel of sort of being a little bit purpley a little bit um a little bit red there's a little bit of green in there but from a distance you can you can it's it's very very pleasing let me turn my cameras around for you so that you can really see that um and i think that is is a really nice effect and sometimes I'll do that. I'll actually take a skein of yarn and I'll hang it on my dress form and I'll look at it for several months. Kay Facet, um, he really um, encourages designers and encourages makers to do that um, because if you put something away, you forget about it and you, you sort of put it out of your mind. But if you're really stuck with something, he talks a lot about putting it somewhere where you have to see it multiple times throughout the day and that helps you to make some design decisions over time and so in doing that and having this hanging this actually would look really really nice with this recent finished knit um, which is out of some commercial yarn from West Yorkshire Spinners but again the colors are this neutral sort of taupey gray brown means that this skin of yarn can really shine and can really um, um, sit you know be featured and highlighted and so I'm thinking that um, some sort of a uh, chunky cowl that I could wear and I do like the handkerchief kind of um, V shape it suits me really well and I think um, I like the way it looks under under vests and jackets and stuff so I sort of am thinking that maybe I need to sort of get over my I really like that that I really need to get over my um, not wanting to work with this yarn and just cast it on in something that's sort of chunky and um, would just be really, really fun to to see the yarn featured um, and actually used. So that's sort of what these segments would be like. Now I would also be taking uh, feedback from people in the chat channel. I'm reading out some of their responses and some of their initial thoughts and reactions to the yarn and um, so that it can be a really positive conversation and hopefully help um, especially those of you who are newer beginning spinners intermediate spinners um, it, you know think about things like color management think about spinning techniques think about how we might use our yarns even if they're sort of not um, knockouts if you will sometimes the yarns that are the most eh when they come off the wheel and after you finish them and wash them are actually the ones that are the best once you work them up in a project because they are a bit eh. They don't, um, they're not show stealers. So when you put them with a pattern, often they actually shine. So it, very, um, a, a great example would be this yarn. Um, who knows, maybe the finished knitted object will be a real knock out of the park and I'll be like, oh, I don't know why I criticize the yarn so much. Look at what I've made. Who knows, maybe that won't be the case at all, but maybe it will be. So an opportunity um, for a lot of us as well, there's quite a few people in the um, wool and spinning community who really have a, an, an ama amazing grasp of um, patterns out there on Ravelry that really lend themselves to hand spun. We've got a pattern bundle in the Ravelry group. If you look at the upper um, 
um, right hand corner in Ravelry, um, in the Ravelry group, there's a there's a tab that says bundles. If you click on that, there's a whole bunch of um, um, uh, patterns that people have sort of self identified as being really great for hand spun. They've either knit them themselves or they think that it would be really great for hand spun. So have a look in there if you're struggling. And people in the in the community will will help you out as well because, like I said, the amount of knowledge is just incredible sometimes. I'm just blown away every time. So I hope that's helpful. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And uh, until next time, happy spinning. Bye, everyone.